Now that you've selected your tubing style, you'll need to pick the appropriate diameter to use. Picking a size close to what you're shrinking onto may seem like the smartest thing to do, but in fact, you could be causing problems at installation, as well as poor performance in the product in the field over time. Pick a size that will give you the approximate 50 to 80% of the total recovered diameter. Example, a 3 quarter inch expanded tube with a 3 to 1 shrink ratio will recover to 1 quarter of an inch. This size would be best suited to work with a cable or bundle diameter of 3 eighths of an inch diameter. Quite often you will have two or three diameters of tubing that will work, but typically one or two will be your best choices. The length of tubing you will want to use is also very important. In the case of the splice, use the one-third method. If your splice is one inch, you will want to have equal amounts on both sides of the splice, thus giving you a total length of tube of three inches. The next most important thing is cutting the tubing. The cut is very important. The best choice for most people is a good, clean, sharp pair of scissors. Other methods can be used, but special attention should be paid to get as close to 90 degrees with no burrs or sharp edges. Tubing while being shrunk is under a lot of stress to fully recover and will continue to try and shrink even after the heat is removed. If the cut has a flaw in it, it could result in a rip or total failure of the tube. Also, make sure that the cable, wire splice or lug has no sharp edges as this can also cause a failure. 